2012 presidential election. Let me introduce you to Fabrice Epobois, who is a cybersecurity expert. And I'm really glad you're here because we've kind of been skirting around the elephant in the room tonight, and that was this huge dump of emails and documents that we got on Friday evening just ahead of the vote. Uh, a hack of uh, Mr. Macron's servers and computers, and it was leaked online and it was circulated widely uh, on the web. What do you know about who was involved in that and where it came from? It's always very difficult, if not impossible, to do any kind of attribution when it comes to cyber war. And this is obviously an act of cyber war. Uh, what we know so far is that the, the, some files have been pampered and are fake. Some other file in the leak has nothing to do with Macron. They are dated like 2002, way before Macron did anything with politics. And uh, the rest of the file, so far, nothing has come out as... So you're saying that of some of this was taken from the servers. We know that much, but you're saying that as Mr. Macron said on Friday evening, it was released as well just an hour before the purder. So mm. it, was, it was pretty cynical. It was released cynical, at a moment yeah. when he wouldn't be able to react. You're saying that some of those documents that were mixed in with the file were false and fake. Definitely. There are proof for that. There are Russian metadata inside Excel files relating the financial of the current campaign. Those files were definitely tampered. So you think it's come from the Russian group, perhaps no, the Fancy Bears no, group no. that was involved in the Clinton no, hack? No, no, no. no. Certainly, well, Fancy Bears, those are high and professional. They wouldn't do such an obvious mistake. This is amateurish work or it's an obvious false flag. We don't know yet. But it's definitely not the work of a high and professional signing his own falsified files. Okay, Jack, you want to come well, I, I want to say that this is a very tricky ma uh, matter, and I condemn such uh, uh, tricks like this kind of civil war, you know. I think that uh, as an opposition in Macron, I condemn this kind of things because this is unacceptable. But it's the new reality, isn't it? I mean, it happened to Hillary Clinton's campaign, Her, you know, the... the the, the server of Podesta was hacked and these emails were circulated. Is this the new norm? Is this what we're going to face in our Western... I think we have, we have to, you know, to condemn and to defend ourselves against such methods mm -hmm. because I think that this is really ruining our democracies and I, I, I think this is very, very dangerous for everyone. And that's why I would say on this point that I support Macron. Yes. I mean, it wasn't just the emails that were released. It was also these fake documents that were circulated earlier in the week about his fake accounts in the Bahamas, oh, that's which again, what, that's story. a very different this story. This one, we can uh, relate this to a very specific Xerox, probably in the United States, and there is a serial number inside the file. It is, once again, very, very amateur work. And it's compared. come from an alt-right group in the United States, we yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so th those are two separate attacks. The first one being very, very amateur. The second one being really amateur. And ha th this has nothing to do with was what Clinton faced, which, which was extremely sophisticated and aimed with, powered by incredible technologies. Same with Brexit. There's a very nice piece in The Guardian published this morning called uh, Higher Demand, I mean Hijack, that explains the technological aspect of that. Mm. What we're witnessing in France is very low tech compared to that. On the, on the sophistication of it, obviously the, the hack or the release of it wasn't very sophisticated, but what happened once the information was out there is that these bots, these robotic uh, servers, were then pinging it around the world very, very quickly, uh, uh, far quicker than you could do it by hand. And so it was being circulated among French voters, so they would be seeing it on their social media, but they wouldn't be seeing it, of course, on French media because it was illegal to publish any of the details. Yeah, the, the French Twitter was censored, French Facebook was censored, and anyway, those bots that tweet automatically, that's an old story, it's called astroturfing. Every state is doing that. Most modern states have those tools to do some information warfare against other states. The, the other phenomenon, Jacques, is that, is that there is a, what they call suppression. So they are targeting opposition voters, Marine Le Pen's party were targeting Mélenchon voters with specific information about Emmanuel Macron. And this is the new reality, isn't it, about yes, the way that you now campaign by suppressing the vote of another camp? Sure, but in fact, it did not influence the votes of the French because everybody knew that something was against Macron on Friday evening, but they didn't change their vote on, the, on Sunday. That's why, you know, you have to balance sometimes 
too much is too much sometimes, you know. When you try to really aggress, to be very aggressive against a, a candidate and, and by publishing fake news like that, I think that, uh, it, it does, you know, people are not that much silly, you know. Yeah. So it didn't influence the French vote this time, perhaps, Fabrice, but what do you think are the implications for the German election, which is just around the corner, and, and our future elections in Europe? Well, depends. Either they are going to face the same thing that the English faced uh, during Brexit or that the US faced uh, when Trump got elected, which is a really high-end technology powered propaganda machine, or they're going to face the same thing we faced in France, which is basic amateurish leak. Uh, and that's not going to have a real impact unless the, the leak reveals something. In France, you have to, to see that the leaks didn't reveal anything about Macron, absolutely anything. People have been searching there is a debate here for the media though, isn't there? Because do you, do you report on what is out there just because it's been put out there on your doorstep or do you take a principled stand and just ignore it? I think it's, it's, it's uh, more important to ignore this kind of things and to vote according to But that won't happen, will it, in reality? People will go through even this bar, sure, which you say is amateur. Course. I mean, in France, there is a law. You're not allowed to say anything during this very specific period of 48 hours before the election. But tomorrow, if another leak come out, every media will jump on it because it's their job, basically. OK. Uh, good to get into that topic. Uh, we're looking at live pictures of the Louvre. Doesn't it look resplendent this evening? You'll recognize the glass pyramid there and the big screen behind. And the stage to the right of the pyramid there is where we expect Emmanuel Macron to appear in front of those thousands 